thankful for the day that star hand touched my life. Amen. And I became saved by the grace of God, made new. What a blessing to be here tonight. We appreciate the good singing that we've heard. What a joy just to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. I'm glad Jesus loves me. Amen. Where would I be without Him? Amen. Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. Oh, I think about the disciples there. The Word of God. Jesus said, we also go away. Where could we go, Lord, but, but to You? Thou hast the words of life. His Amen. words are spirit and His words are life. Amen. In John 5, 24, He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth My word and believeth on Him that sent Me hath everlasting life yeah. and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Yeah. I'm thankful for that, aren't you? I'm glad there is now, therefore, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. <coughs> I'm in Him. He, he put me in the body and I, I'm thankful that I'm not lost anymore. I'm not on my way to hell, but I've been made a partaker of eternal life Amen. by the grace of God. We were in Ephesians chapter 2 this morning. If you brought your Bible, let's just flip over a few chapters and go to Ephesians chapter number 6. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 6 in the Word of God. We desire your prayers tonight that God would send the Word. We're dependent upon Him to send a message tonight. And I'm fully trusting God to do that very thing. For if He doesn't send a message, there'll be no preaching here tonight. We're trusting the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse number 10. Notice with me the Bible says in chapter 6 and verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your enemy is not the one in the pew with you, in front of you, behind you, or beside you tonight. But against principalities and powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God Praying always. Praying when? Always. always. With all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me. That I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in bonds. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. I'll ask Brother Earl Halls to uh, take us to God in a word of prayer at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. Yes, Lord. Thank the Lord for the day to give us Father, Lord. And now we ask the Lord to bless your word, Lord, that we depend upon, Lord, and stand upon, Father, Lord. We ask to bless the preachers as he breaks the bread of life to us, Father, yes, Lord. Open ears and hearts so we can all walk here, hear what does say the Lord. Father, we love you today, Lord, to say Help us the one that's lost today. Lord, encourage that Christian tonight. In yes, Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Earl. You may be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. We want to begin by saying in this message tonight, it's been well published here at this church, that the Christian life is a battle. We are in a warfare. Yep. The Christian life uh, is, a, is a life on the battlefield, not on the playground. 
Uh, it's not time to be playing around in this hour that we're living in today. It's a crucial time. Uh, amen. And we need to get serious with God because we are uh, in this battle. But I'm thankful tonight to know that we are fighting a battle, but we're not fighting a battle to achieve victory. We're fighting a battle from victory because, see, Christ has already won the battle. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. fighting a foe who's defeated. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. a loser. Yeah. He knows where he's going. Uh, uh, thank God. Uh, so we're fighting from victory. Yeah. Victory came at Calvary, the cross of Jesus Christ, when the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, went to that cross and shed that precious <laughs> blood and, and said, it is finished. And the victory was won for you and I. And I'm thankful for that. But we're in this battle today. Uh, amen. And as a Christian, you will face three enemies, my dear friend. I'm talking about the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's the three enemies that we're battling yeah. today. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Now, the world is the, uh, uh, is the society that's around us that is apart from God. That's a brief explanation and I believe an accurate description of the world. The society apart from God. The system of this world. The sinful state of existence and the state of affairs that we look around and we see uh, that's going on today. And as Christians we are called to come out of the world. Amen. Yeah. Love not the world, the Bible says, not of the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So the Bible exhorts you and I uh, uh, to not dress like the world, talk like the world, carry ourselves like the world, live like the world, but we are to come out from among them yes. and be ye separate, yeah. saith the Lord, touch yeah. not the unclean thing. He said, and I will receive you and I will be a father unto you and yeah. ye shall be my sons and daughters, yeah. saith the Lord Almighty. So the enemy, one of the enemies that we're facing today uh, is the world. Another enemy is the flesh. The flesh. The flesh is the old nature. Uh, amen. That old nature that uh, you know uh, that cannot please God. The Bible's clear. A man who is in the flesh cannot please the Lord. But I'm thankful that by the grace of God that God opened my eyes and I've been made a partaker of the divine nature. And now, uh, thank God, as a regenerated man, we have the ability to do just exactly what Enoch did uh, that Brother Ward preached about in the revival, we can please God yeah. by His grace and by His yeah. Spirit working in us. So we battle the world, we battle the flesh, and we battle the devil. Amen? Yeah. Satan, yeah. man. That liar. He's our enemy. You know, in this battle that we're in, uh, just like a military force who may be going out to fight a battle, uh, on a battlefield somewhere across this globe, intelligence is very important. Uh, you know, we cannot diminish, we cannot downplay the importance of the intelligence corps that are vital uh, to the success uh, of the operation that's at hand. Because I, I want you to know, uh, and much like the uh, uh, the the army or the military force that's going to battle, you've got to be able to know your enemy. You've got to know what your enemy's doing. You've got to know where your enemy's located. You've got to know what your enemy's uh, capable of. You've got to have this intelligence. And likewise, we need to know some things about our enemy. We need to know some things about the devil. We need to know who he is, where he's at, what he's doing, what he's capable of, what he could perpetrate in your life. Amen. Yeah. So uh, Paul's talking here in yes. Ephesians chapter 6 and he's talking about, I believe, uh, amen, we could uh, relate this to the devil. He's our enemy. He's our adversary. The Bible said uh, we're talking about not wrestling with flesh and blood, but I want you to know uh, the devil, some things about the devil. Let's talk about him for just a moment. The Bible refers to him uh, in John 8, 44. Jesus was talking and he referred to the devil as a liar, as a murderer, he told the Pharisees, he said, you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth for there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Amen. And then in John chapter 10 of the Gospel of John, Jesus speaking again, talking about the devil. He said, the enemy, the thief, cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But thank God I am come that you might have life and that more abundantly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, thank God Peter described it in, in 1 Peter 5 and 8 as a roaring lion that walketh 
is about seeking whom he may devour. John the Revelator in Revelation chapter 12 called him the accuser of the brethren who's accusing the Christian people day and night before the throne of God. But I want you to know this adversary, this devil that we're in this battle against today, my dear friend, he is a created being. And therefore, as a created being, he is not omnipresent. He is not omniscient. He is not uh, omnipotent. He doesn't have all power. He's not like God, you see. He's a created being. He doesn't have these attributes that God has. And we need to understand this today. So how is it that the devil sometimes seems to be so successful in this, in this battle that we're facing and he blindsides believers and he, he, he attacks here and he attacks there and he tears down here and he carries on with his tricks and he shoots a fiery dart over here and he's got the wiles of the devil going on over here. Paul tells us right here in Philippians chapter number 6 that it's the principalities and the powers, the rulers of darkness in this world, of uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. The devil's got his little helpers today. He's got his little minions. He's got his little ministers. And that's how he perpetrates a lot of the tricks and wiles that he does today because he's got all these little helpers and things going on. Uh, Satan's little helpers. That's what I like to call them. Yeah. Amen. That's what they are. But we need to be reminded today that our battle is not with flesh and blood. Right. We ain't wrestling with flesh and blood, my dear friend. Uh, amen. Thank God that it's against principalities and powers. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Yeah. We're battling the devil today. We need to understand his abilities. I want you to know this. The devil is a defeated foe. We've already established that. Christ uh, destroyed his, uh, his uh, efforts of uh, you know, any, any possibility of him ever having the victory was taken care of on Calvary. Right. But I want you to know uh, that in your life on a day-to-day -day basis, the devil is an adversary that you don't want to go against in your own power. That's right. Right. Amen. Don't ever underestimate the power of the devil. Now the devil... Is a strong foe. He's a, he's a, he's a strong opposition. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, yes, it's true. He only has the power that God allows him to have. He's not omnipotent. Uh, you know, God, God has him on a leash, so to speak. Yeah. And I believe that our sovereign God can even use the devil to accomplish his purposes because he's a sovereign God. Yeah. He's all powerful. Amen. And he's just on a leash, so yeah. to speak. But I want you to know in your day-to-day -day affairs, don't underestimate the power of the devil and what he's able to do, what he's able to perpetrate against you. Uh, amen. Just think of Job. The Bible tells us plainly, uh, you know, what Satan accomplished in the life of Job. <coughs> How he took Job and he, he, he wrecked his body. Yeah. And he destroyed his family. And he did all of these horrible things against Job. Don't ever underestimate him. Uh, uh, don't ever underestimate the wiles of the devil. Don't underestimate the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. That can come against you, my dear friend. The devil wants to use the world and the flesh to destroy you. Yeah. That's what he wants to do. So that's why Paul, I believe, is writing this to the church at Ephesus. And he's building up to this armor of God. Very familiar passages of Scripture talking about the armor of God. This is the equipment that we put on in the battle window. We've heard, we've heard many messages on this. I can think of two messages in the last nine or ten months that have come from Ephesians chapter 6. So I'm not going to belabor this tonight. But I do want to touch on this armor of God just briefly. Notice here, it says in verse 13, Wherefore taking you the whole armor of God. Not just part of it. You see, God has given us the whole armor of God that we might benefit from this. Yeah. That we might be able to put this on. And it says, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. It says in verse 14, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Uh, amen. That, that girdle of truth. That belt of truth. When you put on the belt of truth, that means that every other part of this armor is connected to that belt of truth. That belt of truth is what's holding everything together. Yeah. Yes. A man who puts on the belt of truth, yeah. the girdle of truth, he is a man of truth. Thank God he is a believer who loves the truth. And when you're a man or a woman of truth, the devil will not be able to defeat.
defeat you. That's Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Good, brother. Amen. The Bible says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. This is talking about, literally, I believe, putting on the righteousness of Christ. We've heard this preached many times, no doubt, and somebody will say, uh, you know, that God didn't give us any armor for the back because He wants us to be going forward. And I understand that. I understand what they're saying there. And I certainly agree we need to be going forward for God. We don't need to be backing up. Uh, amen. So to that I say, Amen. But if you'll study this breastplate, it was a it was a breastplate that would come down, and it would actually have a, a, a have a, a part of it that would cover a part of the back. But this is talking about spiritually speaking, the righteousness of Jesus Christ that a man or a woman puts on when they trust the Lord, uh, Amen, and follow after Him. And you've given your life to Christ, and you're trusting Christ, and you're saved by the grace of God. And I want you to know the life that you live for Jesus. It'll do one of two things. And You'll either live a life for Jesus Christ that'll make you harder to defeat or the life that you live for Jesus Christ will tell the tale and it'll make you easy prey for the dead. Amen. 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 And that's as simple as I know how to put it tonight. Then it goes on and it says here, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put on those gospel shoes. Amen. Amen. Yes, how we need to put on the gospel shoes. The God, the, the, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. Amen. We need to be preaching the word, sowing the good seed. The, the Roman soldier who would put on the, the shoes for battle, he would put on shoes that would uh, uh, be worn with hobnails in the, in the soles of those for, for better footing. Uh, you know, I want to tell you, my dear friend, if you're going to stand or be able to withstand, you've got to have some footing in this battle that we're in. Yeah. Put on the shoes of the gospel. Amen. You've got to be prepared to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, that's why it's called feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. You've got to be prepared for this, this thing. You've got to be studied up. You ought to pray, amen, and read your Bible and spend time with God in daily devotion. And you'll be prepared That's right. to spread the good amen. word. The Bible goes on here and it says, above all things, taking the shield of faith. The shield that the Roman soldier would have had, if my study is correct, would have been about four feet tall by two feet wide. Uh, amen. And it would have been uh, made out of wood. It would have been covered by leather. It would have been able to deflect fiery darts and all like that. And it would have been a shield that several Roman soldiers could line up side by side and they would hold that shield in front of them and those shields would interlock with one another. That way when they walked out onto the battlefield and you saw those Roman soldiers coming with those shields in front of them, it would look like just a solid wall walking towards you. Amen. Right. The Bible tells us, thank God, uh, that we ought to take up the shield of faith. You never know when, when Satan is going to shoot a fiery dart your way, but thank God I'm glad that this tells us we'll never have to face the battle alone. Amen. Oh, thank God. But we'll have somebody that will go with us. We're a, member, we're a member of God's family. We're, we're soldiers in the army of the Lord and we'll not have to battle alone. You know, I think about the scripture that said Christ. Christ said, I'll go with you all the way. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm thankful that He's with us. Amen. And I'm thankful that we've got brothers and sisters in the Lord that we can count on and depend upon. We're in the family of God in the armor of God. We're not fighting by ourselves. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes. It goes on and it says, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench yes. all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Let's talk about that helmet of salvation. When you put on the helmet of salvation, my dear friend, you make your mind locked tight against the attacks of the dead. Yeah, right. Amen. You've got your mind focused on God. And the devil can't sidetrack you. The devil can't deter you. Your mind is under subjection to God. Your mind is under the control of God. Your mind is under the influence of God. And you can't be influenced by the devil. Amen. 
like Eve was back in the Garden of Eden. Why? Because you've got on that helmet of salvation. And God's in control of your life. And God's in control of your mind. And you've got your affection set on things of mine. Not on the carnal things of this world that pass away. But on the eternal things of God. All right. You've got on the helmet of salvation. Amen. The Bible says the sword of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And it wasn't any coincidence that I guess I picked out this tie this morning. It's got a sword on it. But I think what the Word of God is speaking of here is, is, is the Word of God. Yeah. Well, I, I think about what the uh, author of Hebrews said in, in Hebrews chapter 4 when he said the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. Listen to the divine in the center of soul and spirit, the joints and the morrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. The only offensive uh, piece of equipment that's mentioned in this whole armor of God is the very Word of God. Thank God itself. Yes. Yes. There's life in it. There's strength in it. The Roman soldier would pick up this sword and it would be a short, a very short sword. It wouldn't be a very elongated sword, but it would be short. Why? Because he needed that in close hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yes. We're in a hand-to-hand -hand combat today. That's right. With the devil and his forces. Yes, he is. Men of God, preachers, you're in a, you're in a battle. We're all in a battle. Preachers especially, you're in a battle. I believe that. I think, you know, when a, a man who works in an office leaves his family in the morning and he goes, to, goes off to work, he might holler back at his wife and say, Honey, I'm off to the office. Somebody maybe who works in construction might say, Honey, I'm off to... I'm off to the job site to build another building today. A man, a man of God, in essence, what he's saying is, honey, I'm off to I'm off to take on the principalities and the powers. I'm off to battle the God of this world today. That's right. Amen. That's right. My brother. Yes. Amen. And he is called the God of this world. Yes, he is. That's your boy. And he's blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel who is the image of Christ should shine unto them. It, it's the, the spiritual sword, the Word of God. That material sword is good for piercing the flesh, but the Word of God will pierce your heart. Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh, I thank God for the day back in 2001 when the Word of God pierced my heart. Yeah. Amen. And God spoke to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, brother. And showed me I was lost and needed a Savior. Hallelujah. His grace, Christ, entered into my life. Amen. We need this whole armor of God. Yeah. Amen. But not just that. We need energy for this armor of God. The Bible said there in verse 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Yeah. Amen. Prayer <coughs> is the energy that enables the Christian soldier to wield this sword. Yeah. Amen. And to wear this armor of God. It's prayer. You can't, you can't wield the sword of the Spirit without the energy of prayer. You see? And Paul, in these very verses, tells us some things about prayer that we need to understand. First of all, he says, pray always. Yes. Always. I think of another verse. I think in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, pray without ceasing. Pray always. That doesn't mean that you're always uttering words. For Jesus Himself said that you'll not be heard for your much speaking. That's right. But you go about uh, your life uh, in, in constant 
communication with God. That means, uh, you know, you never, you never uh, hang up the receiver. You, you don't shut down the communication with God, but you keep that line of communication open between you and God. Pray always. Pray without ceasing, the Bible says. And it says pray with all prayer and supplication. I want to tell you this evening, my dear friend, the individual who comes and bows before God in a word of prayer and all you ever do is ask God for things, you're missing out. That's right. If that's all you ever do is petition God and tell God everything that you want Him to give you, you're missing out on a serious uh, aspect of the Christian prayer life. Yeah. Wouldn't it be good every once in a while just to bow and thank God for what He's already done for us yeah. and the Amen. blessings He's already given us? Yes. Amen. Pray with all prayer and supplication. Don't just ask for things. He says pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. You want to know how to pray? Uh, go back to John chapter uh, 17. You don't have to turn there now. Just jot this down and read it later. Uh, Jesus prayed. Amen. Amen. And he taught his disciples how to pray in another place in the Word of God. That's oh, there's a lot of things about prayer in this Bible that will benefit the child of God. But this is the formula for the Christian to pray. We are to pray to the Father, yes. through the Son, yes. and in the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. To the Father, through the Son, and in the Spirit, that's the formula for prayer. Remember that. Amen. It'll help you. Amen. Why? Why do we do it that way? We pray to the Father, through the Son. Why through the Son? Because there's one mediator between God and man. Who is it? It's the man, Christ Jesus. Yes, right. Amen. Well, I'm thankful. Amen. We pray with our eyes open. Pray with your eyes open. That's what he's talking about when he said in verse 18, and watching thereunto. Amen. Now, I don't necessarily think we're, we're talking about physically here that you have to pray with your eyes open, your eyes closed, or whatever. Well, amen. Sometimes I pray when I'm going down the road. I'm going to keep my eyes open. I'm not going to close my eyes and pray. And if you're at home or you're around the altar and you close your eyes and pray, or you bow your head over your meal and you close your eyes and pray, that's wonderful. But I think spiritually speaking, you ought to be you ought to be watching. You ought to you ought to watch and pray. The, the phrase watch and pray is mentioned many times in the Bible. And that's just simply telling us you've got to be alert. Amen. Amen. We've already mentioned 1 Peter chapter 5. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may be. You've got to be vigilant. That means you're watching. Yeah. You're not going to be blindsided by the devil. Oh, thank you, Lord. And he says, pray for our, uh, all saints. Pray for all saints. I'm glad that as, as, I, as I think about this scripture, you know, many times we say, our Father, when we pray. Jesus even taught his disciples, we alluded to it just a moment ago, when he taught his disciples how to pray. He said, pray our Father, which are in heaven. Why do you yes. say our family? Because we're a family. Yeah. Amen. You know, this is a personal relationship that I have with, with God. And in that sense, He is my Father. But when I pray, I pray our Father. Why? Because of all that you are. We're all yeah. Yeah. Yes. He, He's not just He's not just my Father, but He's our Father. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. And then we see. Some encouraging words that Paul leaves us here, beginning in verse number 21. He says, But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all of them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Again, this is great encouragement to me because it lets us know 
that we're not in this thing alone. I'm not fighting the battle alone. Paul wasn't fighting the battle alone. And I believe these words were written down, inspired by God, and preserved for these low 2,000 years that you and I, as believers here in 2015, can open the pages of the blessed old Bible and be encouraged and see and know yeah. that we're not fighting this battle alone. Amen. Well, I think many times about him, uh, Elijah there in the Word of God, he thought he was the only one. Yeah. But God showed him, low these many thousands that are over here that have never bowed the knee to Baal nor kissed Him. We're not alone. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. What an encouragement it is. Yeah. As we come down to a close tonight, to know that as a child of God, we are <coughs> in the family of God. Yeah. I think God wants to drill that into somebody tonight. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I think God wants to get that point across. That came, that came across this morning. God's sending it back tonight. Melissa, if you'll come on. God wants you to know, my dear friend, that you are in the family of God. If you're saved, let that sink in. Meditate on that. Ponder that. Ponder that in your heart. You are in the family of God. And you are not alone. God is with you. God is walking with you. The Spirit of God, if you're saved, it abides with you. I love that song that we sing. He abides. He abides. Hallelujah. He abides with me. Yep. The Comforter, He abides with me. Yes. Jesus sent Him to me. Yes. Oh, that's grounds for great rejoicing. Yes. Glad we're not alone. Amen. Would you stand with us tonight? As she begins to play... Mm -hmm.